So let's start with this clip. This is Mike. So everybody knows that in the last couple of days, there was this attack, supposedly, on a Norwegian and Japanese vessels in the Strait of Hormuz, right? So we'll just play what Mike Pompeo said, which has just been contradicted by basically every available piece of evidence. And then I want to talk a little bit about this piece that Vijay Prashad uh, published on the CIA's Iran Mission Center. And we'll get to that. And, and also, we'll talk about Adam Schiff and why we should not be empowering people like this. Go ahead. It is the assessment of the United States government that the Islamic Republic of Iran is responsible for the attacks that occurred in the Gulf of Oman today. This assessment is based on intelligence, the weapons used, the level of expertise needed to execute the operation, recent similar Iranian attacks on shipping, and the fact that no proxy group operating in the area has the resources and proficiency to act with such a high degree of sophistication. So I just want to quote briefly from this piece. Um, so uh, just hours after it happened that the explosion on two Norwegian and Japanese oil tankers were the responsibility of Iran, this is according to Pompeo, um, the United States government offered no evidence for this claim except for a grainy video that showed little that seemed conclusive. Pompeo took no questions. And of course, the Japanese, the head of the Japanese vessel company was like, no, this wasn't an attack like that. In fact, we thought it was something that came flying at us, not mm -hmm. planted on the ship. The Norwegian uh, vessel said nothing. And it's important to note that Shinzo Abe, the Japanese prime minister, was actually in Iran the day of in an attempt to restart this diplomatic process that has been destroyed by the Trump administration by ripping up the Iran deal. And I just want to go to the sort of bipartisan nature of this catastrophic policy. This is Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff, who has built a whole brand and really like regardless, I you know, I don't care what you think of the Mueller report or the Russia thing or whatever. In general, I'm quite burned out on this story in both ways, frankly. But whatever you think of it, this guy made objectively hyperbolic claims on a regular basis to build a media profile for himself. Yes. While at the same time- Total blowhard. Total blowhard. I should be like literally on his Twitter bio, like at rep Adam Schiff, <laughs> at rep blowhard. total blowhard. <laughs> Hashtag total blowhard and relentless mediocrity. It took a huge amount of pressure on him to even oppose the Saudi policy in Yemen, as an example. He's totally of the far-right Middle Eastern foreign policy establishment. This is what he tweeted out. Evidence of the Iran of the attack on evidence of Iran's attack attack on the ships is strong. We should be leading an international effort to protect the these the seas and reduce the risk of conflict. Instead, Trump policies have left, uh, left us isolated and the, regi the region unstable. Maximum pressure campaign has failed. So do you see like the total incoherence of what he's doing there? There is no evidence other than what they provided publicly that Iran did this. And in fact, if you were to sort of game it out and you were going to take the flying object angle a little bit more seriously, the two places that would have the strongest interest in doing something like this would be the Emiratis and the Saudis, who desperately want military conflict with Iran. Then he says we need an international effort to basically reduce tension, which had been ratcheted up because of precisely the attitude he's feeding right there. And then he goes into this vague critique of Trump without specifying it to anything, which is that, yes, this has all been thrown into play because the Trump administration destroyed the Iran deal. I mean, it's just so incoherent, the amount of lanes he's trying to play here. But the bottom line is he's feeding, escalating against Iran. And I'm uh, uh, yeah. sorry if I'm so, just, you know. Make it petty. Dim. <laughs> no, I just don't. What was the maximum pressure campaign? Like like pulling out of the deal? Is pulling out of the deal. Pressure? Trying but how is that to get pressure? A, yeah, I mean, that's right. Like, that's like, sorry, pressure. guys, we're out. Yeah, that's not pressure at all. I mean, threatening the Europeans that they can't engage with Iran either. I mean, they've done all of this stuff. Yeah. And all that's happened is like, yeah, the Ira the Europeans have actually mainly folded. And then like the Iranians literally are like, yes, we have to pull out of this deal because I'll we're just getting pummeled on every end down to like there isn't even vital medications there.
Well, also, the two countries that would seemingly have the most interest in finding out what happened here are the ship, you know, the countries whose oil tankers got bombed. Right. And so I love it how it's just like, we should be leading this international effort. And they're like, we're so upset. We're ready to start a war over this. And like, Japan isn't. No. You know? <laughs> the Norwegians haven't said anything. Yeah. And the Japanese company. Is that was so like, Norwegian? That is super just, Norwegian. <laughs> to so not say sh- anything. <laughs> tight lip. Get back to making like organic furniture. Uh, anyway. In 2017, the U.S. intelligence agency, CIA, created a special unit called the Iran Mission Center to focus the attention on U.S. plans against Iran. The initiative for this unit came from CIA Director John Brennan, who left the post as the Trump administration came into office. Brennan believed that the CIA needed to focus attention on what the United States sees as problem areas, North Korea and Iran, for instance. This predated the Trump administration. And so... This is Vijay Prashad. He basically goes on to talk about how under Obama, this was set up, but in the context of the Iran deal, there was a lot of people inside the group that started to develop a sort of more sophisticated understanding of Iran. When Trump took over, they ended up appointing this guy head of the Iran division, who's this very weird figure in the CIA named Mike D'Andrea who was in charge of the drone program under Obama and responsible for like a massive expansion of these drone warfare. Great. But he's also, he's like, I remember there was a New York Times profile of him. He's the same guy. He's like a Muslim. So he like converted to Islam while he was stationed at some CIA thing. And so he's cultivated this like bizarre mystique about him. But the bottom line is, is he's a huge promoter of drones and extremely hawkish. And he's been coupled with a guy named Thomas Kaplan, who set up two groupings at the White House, um, or excuse me, two groupings outside of the White House, including United Against a Nuclear Iran and the Counter Extremism Project, which had been running basically propaganda campaigns against Iran from the outside, including blaming Iran for the creation of ISIS, whereas like they're the two prime antagonists in Syria. So that's like a little bit of the context behind it. And I honestly think in a really bizarre way that like Trump's stupidity and concern about getting like pushed into a disaster like that. Like if Mike Pence was president, we would have already done this. I do think that this is a one where like, this is an unintentional benefit of having Trump be there. Cause I'm not totally sure that he wants to do this. Not because he cares about anybody's well being, obviously, but just because he, it's risky. Uh, it is. And it's interesting. Cause I mean, in typical Trump fashion, says one thing, one moment, another thing, the next. Uh, I love that there was, you know, a reporter asked him a question about this today on the lawn in front of the White House or behind the White House whenever he's getting on and off Marine One. And and he started talking about how, like, you know, under the Obama administration, Iran used to say death to America all the time. Like, you haven't been hearing that lately. (laughs) 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 He's just like, 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 like on one hand, like pulling out of the Iran deal, (laughs) you know, everything that you mentioned about sanctions and pressure on the Europeans. But he's like, but like, see how much better I made things. They're not saying death to America these days, like still taking (laughs) a a weird credit for something that doesn't make sense at all but I wanted to bring something up I saw this um, Politico uh, article earlier too that was looking at you know the Trump administration potentially again this is like who knows with with Trump actually where where he would go with it but potentially just trying to bypass Congress as you know Congress has been completely like feckless and ineffective and hasn't done anything when it comes to military conflict in the last, I don't know how many. They're still running all of these operations from the the original AUMF. Well, and so this thing mentions that basically Mike Pompeo was insinuating that uh, that the AUMF that was supposed to be for 9-11 might apply here. They've been running every single thing Yeah, and that would be the justification that they would have to, you know, and and obviously there's the news this week too that they've deployed a thousand additional troops to the region. I'm actually surprised considering that John Bolton is an advisor to Trump that, that the Iran situation hasn't escalated much further. I'm thankful that it hasn't. But don't forget, John Bolton's the guy that's been saying bomb Iran for like 20 years. 
Yeah. And so is he just ineffective? I mean, I hope so. I hope, <laughs> you know, I hope that's the case, but it's very curious to me. It's also um, that they're so bad at this. Like, I mean, yeah. even you saw the same thing in Venezuela. Like, you know, they would spread a lie and then it would be contradicted a day later. And there isn't this like international anxiety and drumbeat for it. And it's like, even in this case, you know, Japan has already said that they're not just willing to accept any assertions from right. the United States that they want to see what actually happened. And like the, the U.S., you know, the U.S. is thinking that they can just say whatever they want to the American public. And that in itself um, is a finding that's absolutely not going to fly on the international stage, luckily, right now. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video, and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS, or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.